evening. I'm Kenneth Mason, and um, I'm here to bring you a word. Um, this is a very exciting word, and I thank God for the man of God that me and my wife are watching on TV. And um, me and my wife are watching this man of God on TV. I usually don't listen to this man of God um, because he doesn't really preach anything that um, that's good for the spirit. But when I was listening to him, he was talking about Jesus, and he was talking about the law. Of Moses, and he was talking about the law of Christ, and he was talking about what Jesus did for us, and he was reading out of Hebrews, and it inspired me to go read more on Hebrews, so that's the word that I'm bringing forth today. So I basically want to talk about Jesus, because a lot of us say that we know Jesus, and we really um, really don't know a lot about Jesus, we really don't know why he came, we really don't know what the significance of him coming, of his coming was, and we just know that his second coming. You know, which is good that he know that, that we know he's coming back, but we also have to educate and teach ourselves on why he came and what happened before he came. Because before he came, there would um, God required for people to offer to have burnt offerings, sacrifices, peace offerings, and all of this stuff in order because the people sinned. Um, Leviticus sixteen and two. I'm gonna read it. Leviticus 16 and 2, it says, And the Lord spake unto, well, this is verse 1. It says, And the Lord spake unto Moses after the death of the two sons of Aaron, when they offered before the Lord and died. And the Lord said unto Moses, Speak unto Aaron thy brother, that he came, that he come not at all times into the holy place within the veil, but for the mercy seat, which is upon the ark, and he die, and he die not. For I will appear in the cloud upon the mercy seat. So right here you see that Aaron had two sons that offered strange fire before the Lord. And they died. God killed them. So and in the next verse, and all through this verse, God is going to tell um, Aaron, which is the high priest at the time, to cast the sins of Israel onto a goat head. And now see, he has to offer this. Now this is what they did in the Old Testament. They would take animals and offer them for the blood sacrifice. So... Sounds similar between Jesus and, and, you know, in the Old Testament, but we have to parallel it and know what the Old Testament is saying and what Jesus did. So, that's why we're going to read Hebrews, starting at verse 1. And I'm just really excited about this because it, it helps you keep your relationship fresh with Jesus. It helps you understand and, 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 and you will be able to be more thankful for what he did for you. You'll be able to be more thankful for why he came and you know you'll be able to understand and see why he came and why God wanted no more sacrifices, but he wanted his son. So let's read. Verse 1, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 1. For the law, having a shadow of good things to come, and not the very image of the things, can never with those sacrifices which they offer year by year continually make the corners thereunto perfect. So let's stop right here. Verse 1 is very deep. Verse 1 is saying, let's break it down. For the law having a shadow of good things to come. Let's stop right there because the law, he's not talking about the law, which is uh, grace, what Christ said, the two new laws. He's talking about the law of Moses right now. He's saying the law of Moses is a shadow right now. Your shadow is not, you, you, know, your, you know what your shadow is. Your shadow is not what appears. You are, you, your physical body is what appears, but the shadow is behind you. So let's read on. And not the very image of the things. You see? The law of Christ is the very image of the thing. But the shadow is the law of Moses. For the law having a shadow of good things to come. And not the very image of the things. Can never with those sacrifices which they offered. Year by year continually make the coming corn, comers thereunto perfect. So the author of Hebrews says. Can never with those sacrifices. So this is so this is the Bible. He's saying that these people that offer sacrifices back in the day, these animal sacrifices, and if you read in God's word in the book of Micah chapter six, verse six, he talks about that, you know, I'm done with these sacrifices, I don't want any more sacrifices. And Psalms chapter forty, verse six talks about it too. It's a prophetic word. David is prophesying about Jesus, and he's saying that God is done with these sacrifices, and I'm done. I'm gonna do a new thing. I'm gonna send my son, and he's gonna die for the world and for humanity. Amen. So, okay. So it can never with those sacrifices be made. Because they will always, always, always have to sacrifice an animal. So verse 2. For then would they not have seeds to be offered. 
because that the worshippers once purged should have no more conscience of sins. But in those sacrifices, there is a remembrance again made of sins every year. So right here in verse 3, it's basically talking about the sacrifices that they offered before Jesus came in the Old Testament. It had to be done year by year by year by year. Year by year by year. So all the time it had to be done, right? So that's what it's basically saying. But in those sacrifices, there is a remembrance again made of, made of sins every year. <laughs> So, for it is not, verse 4, for it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. Wherefore, verse 5, wherefore when he cometh into the world, he saith, sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, but a body hast thou prepared for me. So let's rock. In burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, thou hast, thou hast had no pleasure. Then said I, lo, I come, in the volume of the book it is written of me. To do thy will of God. So this is date. So this the author of Hebrews is is going back to Psalms, which David prophesied. He's bringing this up. He's bringing this prophetic word up, and he's saying this is what the man of God said. And this is prophetic word because it is now manifested, and now they seen that this is Jesus because the body that was sacrificed was his body, Jesus. Now we're going to talk about the similarities between the veil and the body uh, coming up. Now above when in verse eight, let's go back. Above when he said, sacrifice and offering. See, now the author in Hebrews is talking to you as if he's preaching to you. See, this is what I like about the word right here, right now. Because he's not only writing, and this is how you can see how the word of God is real. This man of God is speaking through the scriptures. So, he said, verse 8. Above when he said, sacrifice and offering and burnt offerings and, and offering for sin, thou wouldest not, neither has pleasure therein. Which are offered by the law. Then he said, Lo, I come to do thy will, O God. He taketh away the first, that he may establish the second. So let's stop right here. Because we're getting to the point. We're getting to the second, uh, the second sacrifice that God wants to establish. He's getting rid of the first, and he's going to establish the second. The first sacrifice was the bullocks and the lambs and the grams and the goats and all of that. The second sacrifice was Christ. Now we're going to get to that. Verse 10. By the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of, of Jesus Christ once for all. You see? And every priest standeth daily, ministering, offering, oftentimes the same sacrifices, which can never, watch this, which can never take away sins. So this can never take away sins anymore. This is why Christ came. Verse 11, verse, verse 12. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of God. So these people in the Old Testament are sacrificing every single day. They're ministering. They're sacrificing daily. But the Bible says, for we all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Even in the Old Testament, they would sin, they would sin, they would sin. And they would have to offer and offer and offer. And they would have to keep offering. So God says, stop. I'm done. I don't want this done anymore. This can no longer be done. And this is why. Verse 12 says, but this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of God. You see, this is a one shot. Jesus came in, came into the world, knocked the devil out one time, one punch, and then it's done. This is what he did for us. This is why we don't live under the law of, 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 of Moses anymore. Now, should we sin? God forbid. But now we live under grace. Now we should love the Lord our God with all of our heart and all of our mind and all of our strength and all of our everything and love our neighbor as we love ourselves. Now by doing this, this will transcend yourself above the law of Moses. Verse 13. From henceforth expecting till his enemies be made his footstool. Verse 14. For by one offering he hath perfected, for by one offering he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified. And if you go back in John 17, one of the most passionate chapters in the Bible uh, that Jesus prayed to the Father. One of the things he said in John 17 and, uh, and 19, he said, And for their sakes I sanctify myself, that they also might be sanctified through the truth. So this is Jesus' heart. He's, sancti he's telling God, I, I sanctify myself. I sanctify, and for their sakes I sanctify myself, that they also might be sanctified through the truth. And if you pair, you could tie that, uh, uh, John chapter 17, verse 19, with, right here, 
For by one offering he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified. Because we are sanctified because he was sanctified through the truth. Verse 15. Whereof the Holy Ghost also is a witness to us. For after that he has said before, This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their hearts, and in their minds will I write, will I write them. In their sins and, in, and iniquities will I remember no more. So this is powerful. This is powerful because we were always taught to work, 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 and 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 prophesy and baptize and do all these things and do all of this stuff. You were saved by a G. You were saved by grace, not not of works, lest lest any man should boast. Is what the Bible says. You don't have to do anything. The Bible says right here you have to work, but at the same time you must know that Jesus took away all of your sins. He paid the cost. He came and then paid the debt already before you even came. He hung on the cross for three hours. One for the past, one for the present, and then for the future. He hung for all of that. For every single thing that you ever dealt with. Every single thing. Masturbation, pornography, lust of the eye, sexual impurity, judging, lust, whatever it is. Pride of life. Whatever it is, he died for you. And you must understand that. You must understand that to, 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 to activate your deliverance. Because you're already delivered. You just have to stay delivered. Amen? So... I want to read this again because this this is another prophetic word that was said by the prophets that the author of Hebrews is bringing back up. So verse 16, this is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, saith the Lord. Now, if we stop right here, even if you go before in 15, it says whereof the Holy Ghost also is a witness to us. The Holy Ghost is a witness to us because without the Holy Ghost, we can't bear witness with anything that the Father is trying to give us. This is the verse 16. This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their hearts, and in their minds will I write them, and their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. Now, I heard the man of God say this on TV. God never wanted us to live by regulations and rules and laws. He always wanted to be... He always wanted it to be a relationship. You can even look in the garden before the fall. It was a relationship between Adam and the father. It was. And with the woman. They got married. They were in the gar garden. They had food. And, you know, they were doing their thing. God blessed them. But when the fall came, that's when, you know, everything went haywire. And it, and it happened. But it was always meant to be a relationship. Yes, this is a religion. Because in the book of James, it talks about pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this. So, all you people that talk, they're talking about this is not a religion. It is a religion, but it's based off of a relationship. You have to have a relationship with God. Now, this is the relationship with God. He wants to install, he wants to install his, law, his laws into your hearts and into your mind. Mm -hmm. So, you can live it every single day. And not wake up and feel like you're obligated to something. Because God wants it to be a relationship. I want y'all to rock with me because, you know, this is this is so fresh. And, you know, I'm not expecting for this to be amazing and good. I just want to teach the scriptures. And I just want to bring to you something new that you never thought before through the Holy Spirit. And because God is not going to remember your sins anymore. You know? So, watch this. Verse 18. Now, where no remission of these is, there is no more offering for sins. Pow! Right here. Now, remission of sins. Jesus died for the remission of sins. Now, before this, it says, And their sins and iniquities I will remember no more. Where those sins are now, which are in the sea, where those sins are now with that we committed, there's no offering for that sin because Jesus already paid the cost for those sins. Mm -hmm. That's what verse 18 is saying. Now, where remission of these is, where is no more offering for sin. Let's keep moving. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus. Now, let's stop right here. Because Jesus offered his body, right? Jesus offered himself. And that's why uh, the book of Romans chapter 12 tells us that we should present ourselves a living sacrifice. Just as Christ did, because Christ presented himself a living sacrifice. Now, we don't have to offer blood anymore because Jesus offered the blood already. He went into the holiness of holies and offered the blood. We just have to follow up and keep presenting ourselves a living sacrifice as he did. That's why the Bible says that he's the first among many brethren. So, in verse 20, by a new and living way which he hath consecrated for us through the veil that is to say his flesh. Now, watch this. Because the veil... 
Now I want to read something to you that my study Bible says. This is what the veil was. The veil was um, one of the things that was instructed by Moses to have in the Holy Tabernacle. A veil is, was a curtain that separated the most holy place from the holy place. The high priest could go into the holiness of holies. And the Bible declares that in Hebrews 6 and 14 that Jesus is the high priest. Now, Jesus is the high priest. He went into the holiness of holies and offered his blood as a living sacrifice. And then that was the uh, atonement. That was the cost for our sins. Now, the Bible says by a new and living way, which he has consecrated for us. This is a new thing through the veil. That is to say his flesh. Now, the veil separated the holy place from the most holy place. The veil was the only thing that separated the people from seeing another level of God. So Jesus was the only thing. His body was the only thing that, se that, that separated us from seeing another level of God. That's why the scripture says uh, through, his, through the veil, that is to say, his flesh. Now, when Jesus died, the flesh was ripped from top to bottom. When Jesus died, his flesh was torn apart. Seems similar? That's why he says, I am the way and the truth and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Because to get through the to get to the holiness of holies, you had to get to the veil first. You had to get to the to get to the holiness of holies, you had to get through the veil first. And through the holiness of holies was the Father. To get to the Father, you got to get to Jesus. Mm -hmm. That's why the Bible says in John 14 and 6, that's what it says. Now the scripture also says in John chapter 10, verse 9. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. Mm. So this right here, God is telling you. Jesus is telling you through his holy word. Look, I am the door. I am the door. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. You can't get to God without me because you couldn't get to the holiness of holies except you pass the veil. And you couldn't be, you couldn't pass the veil unless you were a high priest. We have access to that place now. We are saved by grace, by the blood of Jesus Christ that cleanses us every day. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Through what? Through his blood. Amen. That's so powerful, guys. Verse 21. And having a high priest over the house of God. So I want to end right here. Because this is so powerful. Jesus did it all for us. And if you read Hebrews, this meat is so tough. You really got to cut it up and break it down. And cut it up and break it down to really get another understanding and a revelation. Have a revelation about the revel have a revelation about Jesus Christ. Because he is the gospel. And that's what it's all about. Amen. I'm Kenneth Mason. I'm with my wife, Naima Mason. She's